Stop one for the many Davids. Samuel Bach presents the image of a youthful David as he prepares to battle Goliath. Young David holds in his left hand the slingshot, in his right hand a small pebble, which will be used to fell the giant. The figure of David is carefully carved, as if it is a bas-relief situated on a tombstone. On that tombstone is engraved in Hebrew the name David, or David, and atop the tombstone are small pebbles. According to the Jewish tradition, when visiting a cemetery and a specific tombstone in that cemetery, one leaves small pebbles as a permanent indication of having visited to honor the memory of the one who went before. Bach dedicates this work to all the little Davids who were killed during the Holocaust. Stop 2. Deposition. The dominant form in this painting is that of the crucifix, the cross, with the hands of the little boy adhered with nails through them, bringing to mind immediately the stigmata and the crucifixion of Christ. At the base of the cross is a silhouetted, ghost-like smiling face of the little boy. On his chest is a portion of the yellow star, which Jews were made to wear in the midst of the Holocaust. Moving forward in the painting, the cloth, which St. Veronica may have used to wipe the face of Christ, and then, to the immediate right of the cloth, empty shoes and a knapsack are shown. The empty shoes symbolize both survival and the fact that one is in a place of holiness. As we look at the painting, we should question whether this is a place of holiness or one of absolute desecration. Stop 3. Moishele Two tablets are held high by the figure of the young boy, his hands extended in the cruciform position. The tablets themselves have been fractured, and on them the ten letters representing one through ten in Hebrew represent each of the Ten Commandments. The little boy wears a medallion of a blank tablet waiting to be written upon. Broken tablets in the very center of the painting have the abbreviation of God's name, and beneath it the broken X and cruciform. Each of the images recalls the necessity for us to acknowledge the war and the fact that people continue to act in ways that violate the Ten Commandments, which serve as the fundamental social structure of Western civilization. Stop 4. Ancient Memory Bach shows us the symbol of fortitude and courage of the people of old on Masada. This Herodian fortress above the stark desert now symbolizes what was and what will not be again. In this setting, the form of the fortress is portrayed as a structure and the outline of the little boy. An image of the little boy, again with his hands raised, both in surrender and awe, stands above the entire landscape of the desert. We are reminded that acts of evil were perpetrated on children in the past, certainly in the present, and hopefully not in the future. Although this is called ancient memory, it is also a call to action on our part for a better future. Stop 5. Gathering Ground Bach takes the image of the little boy and fragments of it with his hands pointed upward and the feet, the shoes, and the head shown. There is a sense of both brokenness and the potential for wholeness. We need to take each of these elements and reconfigure them, put them together, and move on with life. Such is breaking and trauma. Bach also includes the scribe's quill, the empty bottle of ink, and a discarded book as a reminder of our need to record and remember these atrocities for posterity. The gathering ground is a place where all of the elements of the little boy, past and present, rest. It is a call to us, the viewer, to take these broken pieces, put them together again, and create a better present and future for mankind. Stop 6. 20 Figures A winged figure sits with an open book, counting each of the silhouetted images that have been stacked one on top of another. Bach is reminding us of the horrors after the war, 
when the Russian soldiers took the surviving Nazi prisoners and forced them to exhume the bodies that the Nazis themselves had attempted to incinerate. This painting is another reminder of the little boy and his destruction, which serves in box art as a mandate to us to behave in a different manner with a different set of concerns to make the world a better place for children. Stop 7. Exposure When one takes a photograph, one opens the lens of the camera to get the appropriate exposure for the image that is being captured. In this instance, Bach exposes the remains of the symbol of the degradation of the human condition. The little boy with his arms raised and the stigmata with blood streaming from it. The yellow stars crossing the canvas with a star placed on the chest of a little boy. The star itself is also a silhouette cut out of the remains of the tin that make up the little boy. All of these elements are placed very strongly and specifically against a brick wall, a symbol of crucifixion and of sacrifice, a symbol of shamefulness of the human condition which has been exposed. Stop 8. In their own image. The grand manipulator holding in either hand the instrument of the puppeteer controls the lives of the two children. One boy to the right in the painting looks like a small soldier. The other to the left is dressed in white with angel's wings. To the very left of the painting, the prayer shawl acts as an indicator of what was and the presence of holiness in the midst of desecration. Each of the two boys, the artist Samuel Bach and his childhood friend, who was also named Sam, are represented, one who lives and the other one who was killed. It is an indication to us both of the fate of all children and the need of us to be aware and sensitive to our role in making the universe more transparent, more available, more accepting of all children. Stop 9. Holding a Promise The arch above the image of the little boy is reminiscent of the fragmented rainbow, which brings to mind the story of Noah and the Great Flood. Noah's story ends with a rainbow that appears in the sky as a covenant between God and humankind that there will be no such disaster ever again. But indeed, there was such a disaster with the Holocaust. The little boy who supports the sticks, which in turn support the rainbow, reminds one of a new promise, the possibility that the covenant again can be renewed. The little boy is also carrying around his neck a collection of branches and twigs to recall the Abraham Isaac story where Isaac says to his father, Behold, we have the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the offering? The entire painting is set in the midst of a very beautiful seascape with a gorgeous sky. The contradictions that are represented by this painting and others in Bach's collection, Icon of Loss, beckon you to engage in a dialogue and conversation with the artist and his work. Stop 10. Torn. The angel draws our attention not only to the little boy, hands severed from his body, suspended in space or supported by rocks and sticks, but also to the angel holding the torn sheet in the background. This angel looks forward with no sense of what the reality is in front of him. In the right foreground, another angel-like figure holds a scroll, listing possibly the names of all who were destroyed. These figures are all placed in an exceptional landscape. In the far back right of the canvas, the chimneys appear, providing a setting for the moment when this tearing took place. After viewing the paintings on the first floor of the gallery, we invite you to the third floor, where the exhibition continues. Please ask a gallery associate to bring you to the third floor via the elevator, where there are 10 additional commentaries and some 35 additional paintings. Stop 11, Rooftop. Welcome to the continuation of the Samuel Bach exhibition, Icon of Loss. This first painting that we will visit is entitled Rooftop. Here the artist imposes the figure of a little boy, cut out of wood, holding a violin and bow, 
placed atop a collection of the detritus of war and destruction. The rooftop floats off into the water, but the symbol of the smoking chimney to the left of the painting creates the setting of the Holocaust and the destruction of young people. Stop 12, Burning. The artist portrays the little boy with hands raised, entrapped in a collection of string, rope, and branches. Frightfully, the upper branches are already aflame. The future of the little boy is that of death and destruction. The setting is again one of great splendor and beauty as we look off into the distance, wondering how, why, and in what way we can prevent this from happening again. Stop 13, Targeted. Here the artist portrays the little boy both as a human being in the far background and in the foreground as a silhouetted sculpture placed on, top of, and as part of, and behind the dividing wall. Above, the arch creates a sense of holiness and of place, as if the little boys are presented and offered up on an altar. In the foreground, the target, already bullet-ridden, represents the targeting of all children. And in the very, very near foreground on the left, we see the empty shoes, again symbolizing the absence and not the presence of the little boy. Stop 14, Signal of Identity. The little boy, with hands raised, faces the six-pointed star, both embedded in the wall and also gathering the figure of the little boy into the triangle of the star. Identity, as a Jew, was forced upon the Jews by the wearing of the yellow star. The little boy is somehow blended in with that and becomes part of the degradation of the entire experience for the Jewish people in the midst of the Holocaust. Stop 15, High Wind. Many of the paintings in the Icon of Lost series are that of a static sculpture. This painting, however, has a sense of movement created by the wind moving across the sea. The upper area becomes the covering of a sukkah, an arbor, and it too is covered not only by the branches and leaves, but also by the stripes of the prayer shawl, the talit, as well as the prisoner's garment. Below, the boy is somehow enmeshed in an artist's easel, and then hanging from the branches above are the red socks, symbolizing the blood of the child. Stop 16. One child's island. The child alone on a single island, surrounded by the waves and ocean, reminds us of the isolation of the individuals in the midst of horror. The trees which create a cave encasing the little boy all have been cut off. All the lives that supported and surrounded and nurtured the child have been destroyed, and the child, in fact, is alone. Stop 17, cumulative data. The artist accumulates a number of the little boys in different materials and different presentations. As the figures of the boy continue to accumulate, so do the numbers of those who were murdered. At the end of the war, nearly 1.5 million children were destroyed. Most of the figures that are X'd out or crossed out, their hands are raised in different positions of surrender of fear, and of resignation. The data is self-evident. We need to make a difference in the lives of all children to prevent such trauma from continuing to occur. Stop 18, Gal Aid. The title of this painting is in Hebrew and refers to a monument of testimony or of witness. It enables us to visualize the images that Bach has created using the little boy in the context of a memorial, but this memorial is made up of children's toys and blocks. Inscribed on some of the blocks are the little boy's face and or his hands, as well as Hebrew letters. Two of the letters in the very center of the painting create the word Aish, which is the Hebrew word for fire. As you look at the construction, 
you are able to see the deconstruction of the Jewish star, of Jacob's dream and of his ladder, and of the chimney. These are all images that Bach uses to remind us that his work continues to tell the story of the little boy and the consequences of human bestiality. Stop 19. The cup was full. The little boy appears through an opening in the wall, which is the same shape as the little boy's head. The hands of the little boy, shown with the stigmata, are carved out of stone, and the opening leads us to a table or an altar with an offering of empty shoes, the little boy's hat, and a cup which has been tipped over and a spoon. The handle of the cup is broken off and is in the form of a question mark. All of Bach's paintings in the Icon of Lost series raise questions. The spoon represents an instrument of survival, and in that one end of it is used for the capacity to get the last drop of soup, the other end can be used as an instrument to protect oneself. The cup was full, but certainly in the midst of all that we now know about the Holocaust, the cup is indeed empty. Stop 20, crossed out, Roman numeral 4. Bach again portrays the little boy with a huge X in front of him. This time the X is created by the remnants of an ancient pillar and an uprooted tree. Both history and the symbol of what was life represent the Xing out of each and every individual that was taken in the Holocaust and in the midst of the continuing trauma which occurs in the world in which we live. The background is a huge cruciform draped in white, symbolizing both the sadness of loss and the purity of hope that mankind's ability to make a difference in our present and future will endure.